which usually means we're already live. But anyway, oh wait, now what is it doing? A song, a dance. A peek into our personal lives. Peek into the craziness. All right. Oh, baby, are you peeking? That's Miss Peeked to you. You don't look very peeked to me. So yeah, well, you'll see. I'm gonna hop up in a second. I'm doing like four things, believe it or not. Uh, why would I not believe it? It's you. There we are. Uh, hold on. I keep screwing this up. Hello. Uh, yeah, hold on. Now I'm waiting for you to see if I can get you in my ears. Oh, there oh, we go. I think can you so. hear me? Can you hear us? We're, we're live. We're trying to start now. the show. I can hear you now. <laughs> yes. Hi, Raina. All right. Let's try this again. In a world of divisiveness, we bring you diversity. In a world of hate, we bring you love. In a world of fear, we inspire you to live. And now, laughing, loving, and alive with your hosts, Rain Thomas, Elmer J. Howard, and Dr. Kevin. Hello. I am Batman. I'm Robin. Does that leave him the Joker? I'm Batgirl. <laughs> Batgirl. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Raina. Hi, Raina. So, Dr. Kevin, you always start this off, so we'll start it off. How was your week? Or two weeks, how was however my, long it's oh, been. Oh, okay, how was my two weeks? Well, my two weeks was, was interesting. Uh, I just put out my November newsletter uh, called uh, Healing Wounds uh, and uh, Moving Forward, which I thought was appropriate for the times. I'm listening. And I uh, actually, when I when I sat down, I don't know what it is, but I'm doing I'm doing crazy creative these days. So it's like every two or three days, new poem or a new song or a new something is flying out of me. Um, and so after we check in in the two of you and before we bring our guest on, when I went to do uh, healing wounds and moving forward, when I went to like do my little type up before I shot the vlog to uh, send out to my uh, monthly newsletter people, instead of like writing the vlog, I wrote a I was writing the, the uh, written part of the newsletter, I wrote a poem. And so I actually am gonna share that with you guys after we do our check-in and just before we bring in tonight's guest. So my, my week is crazy creative and lots of stuff going on and we continue to move forward. As Elmer, you know, cause we already we had an hour and a half meeting earlier today uh, on the Web of Light Expo speaker series coming in 2021. Yay! Yay! A round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. Applaud all around me. That's There's exciting. less Romney than there used to be. Go ahead. What date am I going to be on? Yes, shameless begging. How dare you? Hey, you know, I have I am just finalizing the dates now. Um, and I'm gonna tell you uh what I'm telling everybody is give me up to three topics that you would speak on for about an hour. Inspirational, motivational, giving people tools, skill sets, moving them forward. I'm doing six of them in 2021. So we're doing one every other month. So I have, I'm booking January, March. So you give me the topics uh, that you could speak to. Um, I may book you for up to three of them, all three, if they're different enough topics. Uh, and uh, then you tell me which dates you can do. And then I'll tell you which dates you fit into if you give me more than three dates. Um, and you come on and you touch hundreds of people uh, <laughs> really? in a meaningful way uh, and get some money. Sounds like a, sounds like a deal. That sounds awesome. The fact that of course you always inspire and you know how much I love that about you. And 
about Elmer. So yes, I'm gonna put a little note in here. How soon do I need to get this to you? Um, I am I am picking speaker slots as we are talking. I wanna move this because the first one's gonna be uh, January 17th. Uh, so I, I wanna make sure I get the, the uh, speakers lined up for that. The event is gonna have three speakers, one person doing a healing meditation circle or sound healing or something, anything that's gonna be more of more on the healing side. Uh, and then I'm gonna have one person run an intuitive psychic circle. And so three speakers, a psychic circle and a healing circle of some kind. So any of those that you feel like you wanna put your hands up, you can let me know um, because I don't know what you might offer as, uh, you know, I mean, healing through music and song would be like, like I would think would be an incredible topic that kind of popped up in my head. And I thought of and when I, when I talked to you, I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's something you've ever talked about from that perspective, but I think helping people become empowered through music creation of their own music through other people's music as a as a way to find the words when they don't have them is something that's so needed now um and you are such a light and you have such a beautiful voice and presence i think that you would move people to to feel comfortable risking stretching their comfort zones and finding healing through that venue but you tell me what you want to do and i kind of see where it fits well, that's what I was going to say anyway, because, you know, we do that, with, especially with, it's funny because I was like, okay, that's interesting because a lot of um, hospice or long-term or, you know, where they have people who don't get visitors. So you go in and they're like, can you sing to them and tell stories? Because sometimes music reaches a place that a conversation cannot. So if, that works for you. That so works for me. And I'll tell everybody, I'll, you know, I'll spread it to the hospitals and, you know, and all of, and treatment centers and make sure that everybody is dialed in. So it's, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You'd think I was psychic because like, as soon as you talk, I was like, this is what you need to do. But I try not to pressure people. So, you know, I was getting your waves. I know you were. I was like, oh, we could do like how music heals. And then you're like, oh, I'm thinking about music healing. I'm like, right here, right here, my New England brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so how was your week, Miss, last couple of weeks, Miss Rain? You know, they were um, a little stressful because I've lost a handful of friends under the age of 35 to breast cancer, leaving their husbands and little ones. And I mean, little ones under 10. Um, so, you know, that's, it. I try not to ingest that because, you know, I've been doing it for 45 plus years, but it's always hard. But the blessing, thanks to you, um, you know, we got a, a few troubles out there to the surviving spouses and their children, and it says angels in disguise. And she did handwritten notes that said, you know, your mom's watching over you. And so those went out along with a lot of packages of other survivors anonymously. Yes. And Where's I still, yours? I still, okay, you two show off. <laughs> I'm going straight to the factory. I'm not going to let your troubles be my trouble. <laughs> <Now both. laughs> so that my was trouble a challenge. Passing you by. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get mine. But I've been so occupied and preoccupied with making sure that those who are left behind and you know grieving that they got theirs. And she sent them out immediately with handwritten notes that I asked her to send. So that's been a blessing on the other hand. Um, but besides that, you know, just getting ready for the holidays and, you know, just, <laughs> I thought maybe we were all doing this, <laughs> but I'm, I'm ready. And, um, you know, just uh, working towards making sure some others have a nice holiday of course, survivors and their families, thanks to a lot of donors 
we've been able to send out a lot of boxes to people and kind of funny because people will tech donors will text me and say I told so and so I got a card from her or a text and she said thank you for the package well of course they don't know what packages I'm sending because they donated cash and they're like oh I told them well rain sent it on my behalf and they're like who I said I don't know any of these people <laughs> Just sending it anonymously as well. So hopefully, you know, those things are brightening up other people's lives. So I, I would like to think that I'm being a blessing because I've had a whole lot of people bless me last week and the week before. And of course, and then you two again. So that, that's my two weeks. And Mr. Batman, what about you? I can't remember oh. anything past before today. <laughs> um, <No way. laughs> uh, I mean, I know t tonight I was just on with my editor. We're trying to uh, finalize um, the drag show scene of my new movie um, that Rain turned me down for. <laughs> well, I Dr. Kevin, don't you dare laugh at it. You're a superhero, Batman. How dare you tell the listeners that? <laughs> I would never turn you down. I, I was hurt that, especially since you were in Maine, I would have been up there like instantly, like click, boom, Maine, lobster, drag well, queen. Uh, well, I, I'll give a, a, um, a drop a hint here. Um, my team and I have started working on a new project. Um, this is a mini series to be shot in New England, um, hopefully Maine. Okay. So, so um, you know, it's it's going to be it's based again. This one's also based um, on someone's true story. Um, no, it's not Loving Martin, but it is a gay story. Um, and uh, so we're in the process of working on that. So there's a you know potential that you could come up and. And uh, be in that show. When, when is that? Because I would like to put it on my uh, calendar before I turn it down. <laughs> right. I don't know. We're this is still in development. You know, we're still working on the actual um, flushing out the story itself. We haven't got the script written yet, so we're still in development phase. So. Did you say flushing? Yeah, flushing like out New the York. story. New York. Flushing New that. York. That's where he's thinking of shooting it. Flushing that's New York. right. I'm like, and that's what I heard. I'm like, okay, oh, shooting it in Flushing Queens. Is that? <laughs> no, flushing he's out, shooting it with out. a bunch of queens, all who have been flushing <laughs> right. because they ain't something great, bad. Then they flush and they flush title. and they flush. That's a great title, Flushing Queens. I mean, that <laughs> right. you don't get any better than that. I know Queens people are like, ah, what are you saying? That's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. So, um, well, you know, we will talk in a future show um, because I do want to read this and then I want to get on, um, get our guest in today who I'm most excited about having, an old and dear friend um, who helped me um, what, years ago when I produced a radio talk series on death and dying. Okay. Um, and so that's that's very interesting. And in fact, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of different things coming up. Um, but I want to I was going to share this uh, and um, and it's called Wounds. And then we'll go from this to introducing tonight's guest. Wounds. Um, before you go there, Dr. Kevin, I hate to interrupt, but did you see the comment from Raina? So this. Uh, this show will be to... very near and dear to her. Thanks okay. to you. Okay. Um, no, I'm not seeing the comments. I don't know why I'm not seeing the comments on my, oh, wait a second, maybe. Oh, oh, okay. Wild and crazy. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. So, um, now well, let's do this and then let's get our guest on. Okay. Wounds. How do you heal wounds that are constantly being picked at? How can you bring a healthy new world when you have not cured the illnesses of the old one? Our world, our race, the human race 
has physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual illnesses. For some, they say the prognos prognosis is terminal. For me, it is hopeful. Physically, we allow our greed to ruin our planet. We allow our disenfranchisement, powerlessness, frustrations, and anger to hurt ourselves, each other, and our planet separating us from our own humanity. Mentally and emotionally, our frail egos, insecurities, and lack of worthiness turns us both into both abusers and victims, both suffering and creating the violence, perpetuating the vitriol, living in the land of self-hate, self-justifications for our hatreds. Spiritually, we deny the hypocrisy of our religions and their actions. We say we pray to a loving God and yet kill in his name. We say we pray at the altar of a compassionate God and yet treat other humans as less than animals and objects. We cannot heal the planet's wounds until we each do our best to heal our own. We must cleanse ourselves of judgment and hate to recognize and release the hypocrisy inherently present when we do horrible things in the name of our God. And lastly, we need to walk away from the false gods of fear, hate, power, and wealth. When we can embrace first our own divine nature, we can then be free to recognize the divine nature in others and recognize God in all things. That all life, two-legged, four-legged, finned and winged is all sacred. But until we heal the separation within ourselves from our own divine and push back away from our table of abuse, self and otherwise, we cannot heal, nor can the world. So heal thyself. Own your godlike nature, not as in being God over anyone or anything else, but as the God self that recognizes everyone else's God self and the sacred nature of all things, including the planet herself. Wow. Uh, yeah, wow. I, I don't even know what else to say. Well, it works. That <laughs> was the, that was the poem yeah. I sent out uh, on this month's newsletter. I do send out a newsletter every month. If you want to be on my newsletter list, mydrkevin.com, you can go sign up, but I'm getting a lot of poetry out, a lot of words, a lot of hope, a lot of everything, because I think the world needs a lot of hope right now. I think we needed a lot of light. I think we need a lot of inspiration. And when we come to hope, inspiration, and people that are bringing good things to the planet, we come to our guest for the night, Mary Grace McManus. Yay! She a, Woo! Yay! The crowd goes wild! Woo! She has raised three children and one husband. I love that line. Uh, <laughs> She is a, has been a radio host of Radical Mama Radio, of Awakenings Radio, and she is currently, her current creation is Nativity Tribe Cards Just Released. Uh, Christmas has always been a fun celebratory holiday. For some that left the Catholic Church but lives from a deeply spiritual heart, it presents a conundrum while raising kids. Santa and Christmas trees made sense, but the Christmas manger was everywhere. And of course, so were the questions from the kids. Who are those? Who are those people? <laughs> Who are those people? Who is Jesus? Jesus! Who is Jesus? Jesus! Why Jesus! Birthday special? Jesus! These cards were my answer to those questions that pulled the idea that we are all born from spirit. Jesus was a very special person. As you are, we were each born under our own unique star. That star shines your dreams, your heart's purpose. It is the peace that once you find it in your life brings meaning and joy to your heart. 
Um, and so I'm not going to keep on just reading her, her bio, because when it comes to peace and joy in my heart, this woman has scored it out of the park every time I get a chance to be in her presence. Mwah! In years, buddy. It makes How's, no difference. How is everybody doing? I'm great. I know Elmer's just dying to chat. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I'm trying to do technical stuff still. Oh, of course you are. Uh, well, do you like to be called Mary or Mary Grace? MG. MG. I like it. Put that MG. in the option. Yes. I yes, love I it. Yes. Welcome. Thank She's you. She's a sporty little MG. And thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here, but I have a question. All right. Laughing, loving, alive. Who, who is laughing, who is loving, and who is alive? We rotate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I got it. I got it. On any given moment, we, we pretend Elmer is alive. We prop him up and we throw questions. And <laughs> when one of us distracts you, the other one answers it in Elmer's voice. Uh <laughs> yeah. I've been there, That's Elmer. Us. I've been there. The truth, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what how are we doing this? Because Dr. Kevin, you know her. So are you going to tell because you know what? You know so much about this wonderful young woman. And the fact that she has the elephant behind her that I have on a shirt. I, I want I don't yeah, I know that's so weird. Um, of course, not really. But I want to know everything about her. And we don't have time to learn everything about her. So what should I be asking? Because there are people tune in who I think really need what she's offering tonight. And I don't want to miss the things that they really need. So I think, you know, when you know the people, you always let me do the primary questioning. And so I, I'm going to open it up for you and Elmer. And Elmer knows MG because he was doing tech on my old radio show when MG mm -hmm. was doing, when MG and I were doing stuff and coming together and played with our own radio show mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. So I'd like you to start by asking some questions and I'll jump in here and there. Um, I do want to uh, also, it's not in her little bio, but I also want to say, because I have it here, Cheyenne, uh -huh. Journey to Birth. Yes. Many accounts have been written of journeys through life and into life after death. This is a journey of life before birth. This is the dialogue that she had with her unborn daughter when she was in the womb and she was still in spirit form yes. to help her become become her best mother and her best self. It is an absolutely fabulous book and I cannot let her be on the show without at least plugging this as well. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that should be in my bio. If it's not, I'll, I'll resend it. But that book will be on the Nativity Tribe website. So um, as we talk about it, uh, if anybody's looking for it, it's not up there yet, but we're putting that on this weekend, which is almost over. But that was the plan for this weekend. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for bringing that one up. That one was a journey that even surprised me. Um, so many things you guys have talked about already that I just want to jump in and fill a little bit, a couple of holes. Please do. Go for it. Go for it. Dr. Kevin, I met when he spent some time in the Seattle area and we just connected. There's those people that you meet and it, it was like, oh, I know you. I've known you, even though this is the first time my eyeballs have seen you, I have known you for a very long time. So we got creative together. We laughed together. We like delved spiritually, challenged each other and uh, just rode that journey together while he was out here in Seattle. And I'm still blessed. I'm still blessed by it. So that's, and that's and, and I, I do don't you understand remember MG. what's the what tell, tell me okay so you two because i you're on the same wavelength i can see that mm -hmm. but how i mean this is probably a loaded question but 
how? Because Dr. Kevin is definitely like three onions stuffed inside each other with all those layers. <laughs> and I'm assuming so are you. So I will what... answer that by saying, by telling you about me, and you'll probably okay. hear Kevin in this. And I have an incurable disease. Thank God we have the doctor with us. Um, I was born with this, this, like nothing is complete unless I can find the energy underneath it, unless I can touch the source of what's driving and what's creating. Um, and when I would go there and look at something, when I met Kevin, he was there. He's like, yeah, what's driving this? What's creating this? Where's the heart in this? Where's the source in this? Um, and what you read just before, Kevin, I got, the, I got the chance to hear your poem and I hear you calling to the source that we all kind of gravitate to no matter what religion, practice, whoever you are, everybody's looking for an explanation. We often lump it on God's shoulders. What's God? Define that for me. Who is that? What idea are you carrying of God? Is anybody carrying of God? So it's this place of, of um, really just having to touch the source that creates and drives life. That's where I think I met Kevin. Seattle aside. Right. I got it. I got it. And then once you two met, because, you know, I did, I did a little digging on you and I could see how you two would meet for sure. Hmm. But what is it, this incurable disease, which I totally understand, what is your driving force? What is my driving force? You know, it's really interesting that question because what I've come to realize is my driving force is what put these cards out. So I am who I am and I have gone, you know, I wrote the book and I did the radio shows, but primarily I raised my kids. And so now they're in their twenties and I had to answer that question for myself. You know, who, who am I gonna be now? Who, what am I gonna do? What, where am I being called to? My core, core belief is in these cards. And I don't know if we want to get into them right now. Um, <laughs> sure. Yes. Jury's absolutely. Out. Jury's out. No, go for it. So these cards are nativity tribe cards. And um, what they are is a different way of looking at the manger at the nativity scene. Um, every Christmas, you see Christmas trees, you see Santa, and they, they, Santa, reindeers, they all have a place, gift giving, celebrations together. And then there's this manger because this is a Christian holiday. And there are so many people of so many different religions, atheists, agnostics, you know, Hindu, Jewish, that are in this country as we all celebrate Christmas. And so my kids asked, you know, what, who are these people? Like you said, who are these people? What, what about these little, this little manger and all of these little characters in here? And I had to think about it. The, the, the answer that's out there was an easy answer. Oh, that's baby Jesus. This is his mother and his father and the angels and the shepherds and told them the story of Jesus. But why was that so important? And for somebody who was raised in the Catholic church, you know, I've got respect for the stories and the teachings of Jesus, along with all the other wonderful people who have graced us in this world. But for me, it was something more. For me, my belief goes to each one of us. Jesus was connected to source. We call him, you know, God's child. Well, the Bible calls us all God's children. So what's the difference? 
We are each born under our own unique star. We each are born with a passion and a purpose and skills and talents. We're created uniquely and that's the star. And so to be able to tell my kids, that's the star. You have your own star. There's Jesus and he had his star. And if you are brave enough to step into those dreams, if you're brave enough to, to live according to what you're being called to, because we're not all brave enough to do that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the biggest, the biggest hurdle is knowing what that is. So that also is a journey opening up to who you are and who, what is the star? What what are my skills? And it lies in your heart. You know, the word desire is, you know, it has its roots in the French language, desira, of the stars. And I know you've heard enthusiasm and theos, the God within. This is your star. And we each have one. And when we put all of our worldly ideas and teachings and when we put that aside and say, this is what my heart, this is what moves my heart. This is my place in the world. This is who, if you're a healer, who I can heal. If you're a singer, who I can sing to the song, what song is going to live through me? If, if you're a creator, what invention is needed in the world? Your heart is the only thing that really knows that. And when you are brave enough to step into that, there's a promise and that promise is from the stars. And that promise says you will have an angel. And that is gonna be the person that recognizes what's special in you. The angel Gabriel was the one who announced the coming of Jesus, right? So this is the one that's gonna say, no, wait, you've gotta to talk to this person or talk to, you individually and say, you've got to do this. You're the only one who can bring this to life. That's your angel. Who was your encourager and believed in you even before you could believe in yourself. And then um, um, uh, Amma, I call her Amma. That is the kind of the core of Jewish or Jesus's language, the Arabic language. And it's in many languages, but that's the Mary in the manger, you know, mother Mary. That's Amma. And that is the promise that when you are at your lowest, somebody will be there. One time you might be there for somebody else. You know, we take, we will take on all of these characters for each other, but you will have an ama who, when you need it most, that person will show up with the love that we usually assign to a mother, but it could come through anybody you will have an Abba who is Joseph in the manger. And Joseph in the story is the one who taught Jesus his skills, the carpentry skills. Well, you too, each of us will have somebody who will be there and show you the way, show you the way your, your earthly skills, which are here to learn. The training, um, you will have, you will have shepherds and these are, the, you're out in the field with your shepherds, excuse me, and they are the ones who walk the path with you. They, they know your successes, they know your failures, and, and they're there for you. You know, they're the ones cheering for you. Um, and you will have wise people. And these are the ones that inspire you. And the wonderful thing about wise people is you may never meet them. It may be a book you read. It may be a television show. It may be a movie, a YouTube video. She calling me wise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Some I part of you is wise, but we can't see it. The camera doesn't go down that low and you're not facing in the right direction. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have all of these people. This is the promise. When you align with that source, that place that gives and creates and and journeys. This is the promise of the star. And to be able to build that manger once a year, because every year, year to year, these characters will change. 
if you're moving through life, I'll bet these characters will also rotate. You know, one will be laughing, one will be loving, and one will be alive. And then next year, they'll all be different. So to be able to recognize these individuals in your life, you know, how often we don't step back. We don't step back. You know, it's like, oh, Merry Christmas, love you, love you too. How many times have you asked yourself, what, what, how have you shown up as a gift to me? You know, this person, you are a gift to me. And how many chances do we take to turn around and say, you've gifted me in this way. And these cards help you to do that. You know, they help you to start that conversation to, to really get implanted in that recognition and know that you're not alone when you do hard things. If you look, you will find every character in this manger. That's the promise. And that's, that's at my core, long answer to your question. Um, that's at my core, how I believe life operates. And so this manger just meant so much for me to be able to put these cards together and to be able to put that thought in play and to say, you know, this is where I go next. You know, where, where I can see myself going next is connecting those people who um, have lost hope. Even, you know, if it's like middle school, high school age kids who have, you know, are just entering life that with the idea that, oh, I'm screwed up. I can't do math. I stink. I, you know, this kid, the kids are laughing at me. I'm a, I'm a dork. You know, this self-talk that gets implanted right. so deep so early to be able to help them turn and say, what's in your heart? Let's go there because that's where your power is. That's where your manger is. That's what you're here to do. Well, you know, MJ, I love that because I, I know some of the people watching, we talk about that stuff and we say, you know, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I just don't know what to do next. You know, you don't know the next step or it's like, well, what if the step that I think I'm supposed to be taking drops me off the cliff or puts me back three steps? Um, you know, and I come from a place of that negative talk and I, you know, I have to get up every day and say to myself today, someone's blessing me and I'm blessing someone. And I, I see, I've seen my characters about all my life. People who have protected me through a lot of things. But like so many others, in your heart, you're like, I really want to be a blah, blah. But right now I'm sitting in a job that doesn't help me at all. So it's so far away from what I'm doing. And I sometimes say to people, you're only here for a flash anyway. Right. There are some people here that need you or you might need. And that's why you're here. And I know that's tough because you're just kind of sitting there every day thinking, oh God, here we go again. Mm -hmm. um, I have those people watching and I have those people sending me messages and mm -hmm. they're looking for, for someone like you to mm -hmm. say, what, what is the next step? This, I mean, I'm sure this is a multi-layered question, but how are you going to leave your great job? Or how are you, you know, you're like, I really want to play the violin, but I'm an accountant all day. Right. You know, what the cards, is there something you can get people to do? Is there somewhere they can go? Can they call you? Can what, what happens to those of us who fall in those categories? Well, you begin, you take one step. You take that first step. And here, it's an interesting conversation I just had with someone and it was, um, the disservice we do to ourselves when we have a big picture of this is, I need to be teaching, not being an accountant. I need to be teaching. We hold the big picture and we take one step. And if it doesn't provide the big picture, we look at it as a failure. So one this is just one little, um, because there are other things I want to say. There, one immediate truth to hold on to is take a baby step. Let, lay, uh, let's just use that as an example. I want to leave accounting and I want to be a teacher of something. 
lay out what does that look like? Create your business plan. Lay it, keep your accounting job. Let yourself have your safety. Lay everything out so it's ready for you to step into. And you've got to have faith. You know, the people who pray, they surrender to whatever their version of God is. And they say, take care of it. There is a power in that. And if you don't yes, have is. a God or a religion or something that you lean on to, what are you leaning on to? Well, the, the only thing that's really left and it exists for all of us is the energy that runs through you. Dr. Kevin was talking about this in his poem earlier. It's the energy that connects us all. And if you trust that that energy is calling you, here's what you're going to know. If you trust you are one with that energy, there, that could be called God. The, the word doesn't matter. I'd pick whatever letters you want. But praying to God has this idea that God's going to come and rearrange the, the checkers on the board and make things work for you. No, God's sitting up there saying, I need you to answer my prayer. God needs us humans to interact with each other and be these major characters for each other. So if you are hearing a call in your heart, trust, that is the call from source, from the universe, from God, from the divine. If there's something you can't not be at your core, no matter what you're going to do, this dream is going to follow you. God is praying to you and saying, please bless me with your action. We both know how you were created and who you were created to be. I have, I have some... As God, you could, God would be saying, I have some source of, of inspiration. You step out. You take this chance. I will provide you this nativity scene. I will surround you with people who love you and are on the same journey and will provide you with training and wisdom. You got to trust that, though. Like, again, Dr. Kevin, your poem, the ones whose God is fear they're going to say, sorry, God, I can't answer that prayer. But God needs us to say, all right, you got it, God. I'll do this one. I'll answer this prayer. Because if it comes from your heart, it comes from God. One of the things that I will often remind people is that prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. Mm -hmm. And so when we send that prayer out to God, Goddess, Ale, Buddha, Great Pumpkin, whoever, um, it, I know, and if you know, you will discover the truth in it, that that prayer gets answered by these people on this nativity side scene. Mm -hmm. the, the answer comes, God will never not answer. Spirit will never not answer. We just don't pay attention. We have a limited way in which we want it to show up. We have all of these constrictions and limitations on ourselves, on the world, on the people around us. Uh, you know, I can't tell you how often I, I've had to push somebody to be like, well, have you talked to them? Well, I know what they're gonna say. No, you don't. You don't know what they say, your fear knows what they say. Your, your yesterday's, your last year's you knows what they were going to say, but you don't know what they're going to say today. Right. Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, this is, oh God, I've missed you. That's where we connect. That's where we connect. Yeah. So that is um, pretty key. And that's also why these cards were so meaningful to me for me to put out because I feel like I'm entering the next last forever chapter. And you know what? Here's another thing, Rain. Desires are like 
just, you know, carrots that you put out in front of a horse. They get you, it's like, it's how the universe can tap your soul and say, move this way. Come on, here's your carrot, here's your carrot. And you move. And once you get there, it's like climbing a mountain. You go up a hundred, you're, you're starting at the bottom and you look at this mountain, you're like, wow, that's, that's going to look really cool at the top. You can already kind of imagine, but you go a hundred yards up and you look around and you're like, oh, I didn't know I was going to see all this and look at that. And even the top is looking different. So your perspective, what you know changes and you only are partially up. You go up again and your perspective right. changes even more. So to get tied into this one dream is my one and only. And that's what I, if you keep feeling it, okay, keep chasing it, but be ready. You could get a hundred yards up that mountain and your dream could be like, yeah, you got here. Now look what we, we've got in store. It's okay. That's, that's the path. You know, you go here, then you turn right, then you go straight, then you turn left. And that's the journey. That's the fun of it. That's the beauty. Uh, yeah, I love that. And, you know, and, it, and I always hear people say, oh, we live vicariously through you. I'm like, live vicariously through yourself. Right, oh, right, I could right, never right, go right, do right. that. Oh, I could never go see that. Oh, I could never go. I mean, even simple things. Oh, I could never go to a restaurant by myself. I'm like, you miss out waiting for somebody else to come along because sometimes you go to that place and that picks up the person you need and they put you in touch with some another part of the puzzle. Right. Yeah. And I think it's, yes, I just think yes, that's yes. also fascinating. Isn't it? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I just think it's also, I, I didn't see this coming with, you know, Elmer and Dr. Kevin, but obviously, you know, had I not been cast in Elmer's 500 award winning film, <laughs> um, those other things. Shout out Elmer. Lined up. <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't have lined up for sure. So we, you know, I love when guests are on here and they come from all walks of life and, it, you know, and they explain the journeys differently. It, I just think that's great. Because Don't you, you know Elmer? Yes. You know what you're doing, Rain, in those times? You're trusting. You're saying, all right, God, I, I, I got this one on my list. Right. You get the rest. And so you get there and you like sitting back here behind fear. You've released nothing. You've connected not at all with the universe. You take that step and then there's a flood and everybody else feeling that energy kind of shows up and it's like, wow. And you're like, I need to go this way. And you get there and it's even greater. I mean, if you could relay to the people what happens on each step and let them know, no, it's thrilling. Yeah, there's ups and downs and hardships and failures, but in your soul, it's where you're meant to be. And it's thrilling. I, I agree. And you know, when I tell people, the first thing I want to say is you're so lucky. You have such nice friends. You have the, I'm like, it's not luck at all. You know, first of all, I'm very spiritual. And I believe that you get what you put out. You know, if, if, you know, if you're selfish, I just think selfish comes back to you. And I do my best to just have a good time and and, you know, hopefully that me as a person changes someone's day, you know, in a good way every day, because yeah. so many people change me. I have wonderful friends. I have people I've only met once or twice that were like incredible to me. And I, it, it is wonderful. And it's, you know, yeah, there are challenges and ups and downs and, you know, and I'm also one of those people I'm like, okay, God, I want you to drive. This is all yours. But let me put my but on your foot on the accelerator because you need to speed this up you're going too slow for this for me yeah. and then of course you know things kind of stop <laughs> they come to a halt because you know you can't have two drivers right in, right, in right, one right. vehicle right. so it, it is a learning process and um you know getting with Elmer and Dr. Kevin because I can remember what I was thinking before Elmer called me for the audition I was just like it would be really fun or really interesting to have a role in a film where I could, you know, talk a little bit about breast cancer and know someone who has lived through it and show people that life still goes on and you can still inspire others. And it was probably a week later 
I got a call from Ella. And, you know, here we are, them turning me down for other roles, but that's a different story. <laughs> Mary uh, MG, you have yeah. some pictures of of oh, your I cards, do, I do. and yeah. I and and I'm gonna see if you'll take a sec before we run because I know how quickly we run out of time here. Suddenly, oh, wow, Elmer's doing the. You want to share you some of what on? the cards yeah. look like? Yeah. So, oh, wait, let me go back. I've got to hit share screen. And we have two um, attendees on Zoom. Usually most of our people are from Facebook, but we have um, Che who, Che or Shay, who said at one point Hi. that Mary Grace is something special, something you referred to. Oh. And also uh, Jake is on Zoom as well. Wow. They're my babies. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hi, guys. Remember me? <laughs> <laughs> they do, actually. <laughs> Who could forget you, Kevin? <laughs> okay, so this is the family. Can you see this? Are, are we sh screen sharing okay? Yep. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Okay. So each pack comes with all of these cards. And um, I have this long poem written, but each one, do you see on the front of the card? Each one has a verse written for it. Here's a close up of Gabriella. She sees what you've come here to do. She believes in your perfection until you believe in it too. And so this is a card that you would open up and write personally to somebody who's, they just took a chance on you. They believe in you. Here's Ama. And this is the one who, who loves you with the mother's devotion. Ama emerges as shelter from storms, unconditionally holding you should efforts be torn. So it's the one where you go. It's your soft place to land. And then here's Abba. That's the Joseph card. Um, he teaches you your craft. Abba refines the tools of your craft, building trust in your skills and confidence that lasts. So that's the, you know, that earthly person that's like, okay, I got this. I'm going to train you. And now here are your shepherds. These are the ones that walk with you. Beside you are shepherds sharing laughter and tears, friends bonded in hearts over months, over years, any amount of time. They could come in and affect you in a week's worth of time and be gone, or they could be with you for years. This is one of my favorite cards. Oh, the artistry is just phenomenal. I did not draw these. I worked with some brilliant artists. Um, wise travelers inspire from near and from far. They've seen the road you're bound for and bring wisdom from your star. And so this is a card that you would, inside it has a, a, a bit of a, you know, you have been a wise inspiration to me. And um, so this is the pack. Um, I don't know if they can see me now but it comes in a folded pack. And I'll show you this when, we, when I stop sharing the screen, but this is the front of the pack and that's the whole nativity tribe. And this, when you open up that folder, you have, this is for you as a keepsake. And this is the beginning of the poem there. You are a jewel from the sky called to the earth to tend the seed in your soul from the day of your birth. As you trust in your journey, the nativity appears, bringing counsel and comfort in many forms over years. So then this becomes your keepsake and you can put the year at the top and the names of each person that you sent the cards to so that you can remember year to year who was your yeah. nativity tribe. Oops. Um, so. We lost rain. Oh, there she of is. course right. we did. <laughs> she froze. This, this is the the pack, and inside the cards all come, um, you know, with envelopes ready to send. And that is, and the back is a bit of an explanation of what it's what it's about. So you know, they make a great gift for to give to somebody else, so they can have these cards to give out, or for yourself to just give. But you know, it was a a wonderful walk with kids to be able to get them to reflect and acknowledge, wow, you know, I can take risks. 
That's what it means to step out, to take a risk. Right. Because you're trusting, right? I love it. Absolutely. Am I back? Can you hear me? You're back. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> we missed you. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, Dr. Kevin and Elmer, we have like five, four minutes or something. So I've I've enjoyed having MJ, M, MJ, because my knee, Never mind. MG. I've enjoyed Wait, having very good, so it works easier. <laughs> on. <laughs> and it, it, so tell them how we find her. Uh, the website, and uh, we've got it. So, Elmer, I'm sure we'll post it underneath is nativitytribe.com. www.nativitytribe.com. You can go there and find the cards, and you can also connect with MG there. Yep. Um, and if I'm really, really lucky, you'll be able to connect with MG at one of the Web of Light Expo uh, speaker series days because I'm going to romance her and I'm going to beg and plead that Ooh. she comes on and teaches at one of my speaker series. You know it, baby. I'm always there for you. I'm she always coming. She was taking notes at the beginning when I was talking to you, Rain. I know her. You were. <laughs> You were taking Tell me about the speaker series. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes. So, yes. So, nativitytribe.com. Uh, and pay it, attention to the Web of Light Expo series because you will see all of these people speaking at some time in 2021 at the Web of Light Expo speaker series as well. Wonderful. <laughs> Kevin, you are the bringer of light. Well, the synchronicity yeah, yeah. of this was amazing, MG, because literally you sent me the nativity cards and I went, oh, my radio show's booked, the podcast is booked, now's the time to promote these and get these on and there's nothing free. And Rain sends me an email and goes, our guest canceled, what do you want to do? Do you have anybody? I was like, yes! That's it. That is how the universe works. That's it. I'll yep. do the work. I'll get these cards together, put it out, and Rain will get into Dr. Kevin's book and say, opening. And I posted the website on the Facebook Live. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh, MG. Yes, sir. Write me up. Uh, write me up up to three topics that you would speak on. I'm doing six of these throughout the year. Okay. So if you write me up like three, because Every speaker that comes on, I, I'll have on more than once as long as they're speaking about something completely different because I'm trying gotcha. to sell it as a package as well. So so somebody might buy all six. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, But it, the sooner you can get that right up, 25, 30 words, both of you get that right up to me um, because I got to start placing who's going to be what and we're going to be doing, um, I'm going to be doing little mini interviews with all of the speakers like Zoom and we're gonna tape them to have yeah. them and I have a just Wait, professionally. Wait, who's our next guest? We got less than a minute, Kevin. Oh, who's our next guest? Go for I, th it. I thought I you said we were off. Next guest is. You no. always say who our next guest is. So it's Paul, I can't, guest? I can't pronounce his last name. More, more yeah, you're gonna love this guy. He is a superstar photographer for high fashion magazines in New York City. Woo. So that's Woo. that's going to be our next week. And his name is. After. I can. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me, okay? So we're going to play us off for tonight. <laughs>